Hey, Spencer, you talk frequently about mimesis in art. I was wondering if you could talk about how this might apply to music. Okay, yeah, great. So I raise this, I bring this mailbag question to you now because it's directly related to what I was just saying, which is that um, mimesis is kind of the artistic side of everything that I've just been describing about science and astronomy and the quadrivium, right? Um, if the whole heavens declare the glory of God. And if our sight is given to us so that we can see uh, representations of the truth, right, and, and be drawn up to higher truths through those representations, um, then art is kind of the emotional side of that, right? It's designed to convey to us symbolically, not things like one and one is two, but things like you know, I love you or things like, you know, this is what fear feels like and so forth. Um, and the whole kind of spectrum of human emotion, the lived experience, if you will, which is crucial because it's the most, I think it's the center of why creation exists at all is so that there can be self-awareness and consciousness in, in us as images of God. Um, art, visual art, does mimesis in a certain way. And Aristotle has some great comments about this. If you want to learn more, go read Politics Book 8. Um, but then later on, this becomes also something that, uh, you know, Schiller talks about. The Germans are really good on this too. Um, I'm going to give you the crib notes, if I, if I may. Um, I look at a sculpture. I see David's face, Bernini's David, right? His, his lower, biting his lower lip, his eyes are concentrated in tension. I, and I feel, I have the sense that he's winding up, right, to throw his slingshot. And that kind of communicates to me the inward experience of what that must be like and, you know, who he, how he must have felt facing down Goliath and so forth. Um, that's how most visual arts work. And indeed, it's also how, how drama and literary arts work, right? Yeah, I hear, I hear someone speak a word. That word makes me think of certain associations. I feel certain ways about it, right? I see people behaving on stage in certain ways. What I'm getting at is these all have these kind of symbolic intermediaries between my emotional experience and uh, the other guy doing something, right? I, the artist has and recollects an emotional experience, has an insight into the human experience um, and finds some kind of, you know, rubs sticks together or smears a canvas with mud or, you know, puts a guy on stage and somehow gets a kind of symbolic representation where, look, a word is not the same thing as a feeling, but it can stand in for a feeling, right? Um, these sort of, uh, you call them symbols. The Greek word for them is symbola, which is literally they're kind of clashed together. You kind of take this thing over here from the sensory realm, you take like a sound and you marry it to an association or a feeling or a, a thought, and then you have a symbol. Symbols don't necessarily resemble the thing that they symbolize. So I can have a sign that says school crossing. Um, and I know that there are kids, even though it doesn't look like kids, right? I mean, I'm worried that I'm not, you know, that now I know to watch out so that I don't hit kids with my car. Um, music, Aristotle argues, doesn't have that filter, that symbolic filter. So it has this kind of more direct power um, that tone is itself a uh, kind of weapons grade emotion, unfiltered uh, nuclear reactive emotion. And that's why it's so potent to inspire certain things in us. It's like, it's not a representation of certain behaviors that might make you feel a certain way. It's simply the motions that take place in your soul when you feel that way. And that's how many ancient theorists talked about it, it was about movement, right? The idea of motion. And this is why you have the ethical theory of music as mimesis. Um, and audible music is like the kind of, uh, a kind of, uh, seismic chart, you know, when, when, uh, when earthquakes happen and then you have a needle that just registers how much it's shaking. It's like the motions of a melody or the motions of a rhythm are sort of understood as that seismic chart of the emotions in your heart. So it's direct and unfiltered rather than representational and symbolic. Now, other people would argue differently, but I would say that this is one of the still one of the most powerful ways of understanding why music is so emotionally affecting is because rather than telling us a story that makes us feel a certain way, it just presents us with the feeling in its kind of pure form. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is a form of, of mimesis, but it's almost, some people like Diogenes of Babylon said it, it it's almost isn't even mimesis because it transcends mimesis by going, by bypassing the representation. I think it's still a form of representation, um, but I think it's a more direct form than all the other forms of art. It doesn't mean it's better, it just means that it's more powerful, like emotionally immediate and concentrated. Uh, music is weapons-grade emotion, that's how I put it.